Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo brown stain off of that runic subscribe button while we are milling your little boo boo stain out with runic Ishizu uh, Jesus Christ the deck. <laughs> so, holy jumping banana balls, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, really quick, thank you so much for all of the support. We're still at over one thousand subscribers we're climbing even further into the ladder thank you all so much all jokes aside for all the support i really do appreciate it my mom actually just had rotator cuff surgery today so we're going to be a bit more laid back and not as extravagant uh, uh in this video because i don't want to wake up my mom as she's trying to rest literally just right in the other room so we're gonna have uh, this be toned down for the next couple of videos just until she's kind of back up on her feet don't worry she's doing totally fine uh just send some prayers and good vibes she's gonna be just fine she's been through this before so anyways i want to talk about this top eight uh deck list <laughs> from arizona man you people out in arizona y'all got some weird shit real talk like you got neshi out there topping with crystal beast you got some dude coming in top eight at an arizona regional with runic ashizu so either that or just crystal beast had a big glow up <laughs> like just two cards two cards from crystal beast and then everything else changed crystal beast had a glow up anyway let's talk about uh this deck here so this is runic ashizu he came in top eight and i've been testing this deck this deck is disgusting ladies and gentlemen mystic mine is such a good call right now because so many people are trying to prepare for ashizu tier elements so they're not really going to be as prepared for something like mystic mine you know especially when you have 15 cards in your side deck for you know whatever cards you need you know you have to divert your options to the best of your ability and cover as many bases as you can you know you may not have enough coverage in the side deck for mystic mind and you may not be able to really main deck anything so let's go ahead and dive on into the deck list here it also doesn't help to or rather it does help the mystic mind player because the shizu dash is starting to move away from spell canceler and uh, eradicator epidemic virus so we're playing one druid worm and one magnemite just a little two card buy steel package you could in theory increase this by taking out the Bridges Salvation package and the Metal Foes Fusion, maybe even the Foolish Barrels, drop this on down to 40. But this little engine you have here is so good, and it doesn't really ever brick because you can just ditch any of the bricks with Hugin and then send them back with either Medora or Keldeo. We're playing two of each of the Ishizu cards, two Kelbeck, two Aikido, two Medora, two Keldeo, along with three copies of Divine or the Herald just to be able to dump them and get free mills and easy synchros. Um, two of each is fine. I mean, you're already playing a 43-card deck, so... You know, no reason to bog yourself down on three copies each when it may never really ever come up that often. For the spells, we're playing three Foolish Barrel Goods with a Metal Foes Fusion and Bridges Salvation as our targets. One Metal Foes Fusion, it just, whenever it's in the graveyard, once turned, you can shuffle it back into the deck and draw a card. It's just, it, it's just an upstart, really. I mean, you could argue that you could play upstart instead, but yet this is good because if you mill it with the Ishizu stuff, then you can just send it back and draw. I guess it's just kind of player preference. One terraforming, one golden droplet, three copies of curse, uh, three copies of tip, one dispelling, three slumber, three flashing fire, one uh, runic smiting storm, three destruction, with two mystic mine, only two runic fountain, and then one bridge of salvation, one metaverse. In the original deck profile that the person had posted, which I'm going to leave a link in the description to the original poster, uh, I don't remember their YouTube channel name off the top of my head, but I will give credit where credit's due. Be sure to go check them out and subscribe. Let them know that the A gang sent y'all. We're just going to have the whole A gang attack that video, and uh, just let them know that AVLR32 sent you, and I'm sure that that person will be very appreciative um in the original profile he did not play droplets he actually played two smiting storm but he said that he would switch to one droplet and one smiting storm because it gives you an extra name you know you don't really ever want to play multiples unless it's the good ones like the ones that you see three of in here because those are just really good other than that you just kind of want to play one of those because you want as many different names as you can you know if you're drawing three cards off a of fountain on the opponent's turn and you hit three different runic names well now you've got three quick plays to use during the opponent's turn only two fountain you know this is a 43 card deck but the fountains can be recycled pretty easily you've got hugan to search you've got the ashizu cards now that we have access to these you know even if your fountain gets feather duster for whatever reason or twin twister you've got both keldeo and medora to send the fountains back into the deck which makes your hugan live and it makes your metaverse live you know 
that's what's really cool about this deck is especially with Keldeo and Medora that a lot of cards that may end up being bricks if you know cards get milled instantly become live again because you're able to get them back with Medora and Keldeo. You know, you look at something like Terraforming and Metaverse, if you don't have your field spell targets in the deck because they're all milled, you can just send them back and then use Metaverse to just instantly play it. It's really disgusting. And then, of course, you're playing the goods for Fusion and Bridge. You have to play Sapphire Pegasus with the Bridge because you can't just search a field spell. You have to search both a field spell and a Crystal Beast. And stat-wise, Sapphire Pegasus is the biggest one. Technically, it's Topaz Tiger, but your ass ain't going to have no battle phase pimp. So, uh, yeah, you actually mean all these rune spells you're never going to be attacking. So, it is a cheeky fun uh cool way i guess to get to one of your four field spells and in total you have what one with the terraforming two with bridge three with metaverse three ways in the main deck to get to one of your field spells not including hugan or gary to recycle for the extra deck we're playing one frecky one ins to dump off the uh Herald, uh, two copies of Gary, one copy of Munin, three copies of Hugin, and then one of the Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign, one Baronet de Fleur. These are both of your level 10 targets because this becomes a level 6 once you dump a level 4. Uh, he was playing Stardust Charge Warrior, but Coral Dragon's just kind of better. You can ditch any card, which means you can get rid of a brick in your hand, or like a Metal Foes Fusion or something, and then just pop a card the opponent controls. And then if it's sent from the field of the grave, you get to draw a card. So, with Stardust Charge Warrior, once it's summoned, you get the draw. You could argue that that is a little bit better, but I feel like Coral Dragon is just overall the better card. Then we're playing uh, one Cupid Pitch. You can increase or decrease its level by the level of the tuning used as a material. You just basically level modify it to get you into other synchros or even to into exceeds plays. Uh, one Baguska and one Dweller because they're good. And then one Elf because it's disgusting with Herald. Uh, you literally can just use Hugin plus Herald, make Elf, and then during the opponent's main phase, you can go Elf to revive Herald, and then Herald dumps like another Aigido or Kelbeck and mills five more cards. For the side deck, we're playing two Lava Golem, one Feather Duster, one Call by the Grave, two Droplets, because you don't give a shit about ditching any of these guys, and uh, you don't care about sending your runic spells on the field to the grave, because you can just activate them and then just chain the Droplet and send them to the grave. You still get their effects. Three Evenly, because going second is hard. Uh, <laughs> one Exchange of the Spirit. Two Deck Debbie, because uh, you have a 2000 attack Frecky sitting here saying hi. Uh, two TC Boo, because it kills Flunder and a lot of other decks. And then one Gravekeeper's Trap. You know, so many decks that are using the Ashizu cards aren't playing Gravekeeper's Trap and Exchange of the Spirit. And in something like Tier Element, I understand why, because they can be a bit bricky. But man, in any other deck that can abuse Gravekeeper's Trap and Exchange of the Spirit, it's disgusting. So Gravekeeper's Trap, while Exchange of the Spirit is in your grave, your opponent cannot activate the effects of cards in the graveyard or special summon monsters from the graveyard. So this instantly just says screw you to tier elements, which is always amazing. And then you can only use each of the following effects of Gravekeeper's Trap once per turn. During the main phase, so either player's main phase, you can ditch a card, add one Gravekeeper's or Earth Fairy monster from your deck to your hand. During your opponent's draw phase, before their normal draw, this card's already face up on the field. Field, declare one card name look at the card or cards drawn for their normal draw and if it was the declared card send it to the graveyard so that's just sort of like luck of the draw you'll usually only get that off if like you go exchange of the spirit and then you know all the cards that's in the opponent's deck then you kind of have a better idea of what to call um but really you just side deck this thing going first exchange of the spirit and gravekeeper's trap you know you take out i guess whatever you don't need <laughs> um you know maybe like metal Foes fusion bridges salvation and kind of go from there and I've talked about it before on the channel, but what's cool with Exchange of the Spirit and the new support is that when you activate it, it just checks to make sure that both players have 15 cards in their grave. Like, that's the only condition to activate it. Once you activate, you pay a 1,000 life points, and let's say you have a Keldeo and a Mudora, you can activate them both in a chain, banish his cost. Since Exchange of the Spirit is face up on the field or in the graveyard, you can target five cards instead of three. So you can then, in total, send 10 cards from the opponent's grave into their deck. Then when the deck and graveyard swap, the opponent's only playing with a five card deck. Congratulations, you just milled them out a crap ton of cards. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's disgusting when it goes off. Is it often? No. Uh, in my several games of testing, I have yet to get that to happen uh, because I've usually just milled the Exchange of the Spirit, but that's fine because if Exchange of the Spirit's in the graveyard or on the field, then Aigido lets you mill five more cards from other player's deck. If Exchange of the Spirit's face on the field or in the graveyard, when Kelbeck is uh, milling or as its secondary effect, then you just get to set any trap from your grave to the field. So you can just reset the Exchange of the Spirit and just try again. <laughs> so... 
this deck is super cool like i said i'm gonna leave a link to the original video down in the description uh congrats to this guy going top eight this deck is disgusting i love it it just i knew it was gonna be a matter of time before someone broke runic with the ishizu stuff and that time is here so if you hate that ishizu is tier zero if you hate that you know other decks can't keep up play this because I've been playing this on uh, EDO promos today. I've been pissing people off. And it's it's a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. So, <laughs> in the words of Valley D, Avery, every time we play test, there seems to be a mine involved somewhere. And you're right, Valley D. Uh, there's going to be a mine involved when we're play testing with this. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.